Greetings. My name is Michael Dell. I am the founder and lead investigator for Spooker Paranormal. My group and I are based in Portsmouth, Arkansas. I have been researching and investigating the paranormal for over 14 years. During that time, I have seen some astonishing things. I have heard some astonishing things. I have gone into dark buildings, houses, historic sites, basically following my group's motto, which is Seek the Unseen. I got to reasonably pondering, why did I do this? What got me into this? What made me want to go into these places? Looking for things that technically you can't see. This defies logic and reasoning, of course. They say that sometimes up to around 60 to 70 percent of people do believe that ghosts exist. Do they? Well, we tried to find out, and the results have been absolutely amazing. I asked myself recently, why also the other ones out there? You see the big TV shows, and they always have an interview with the guy that investigated this location. Then the big groups that go on to find scratchy voices, this, that, and the other. Well, the person that they spoke to for like five minutes is still an unknown. I want to give them a voice. I want to give them a chance to tell me why do they do this. What is the motivation and the allure of darkness? So I've come up with an idea for a documentary called Dark Journeys. It is my attempt to tap into the psyche of other ghost hunters. Is it the thrill of darkness? Is it the thrill of hearing the ghost story that's always been popular? Everyone likes a good scare, but when you step into a building that is allegedly haunted and you hear something that, de that defies logic on a, with your machine, your camera, your recorders, and also when you have that thrill when your hair stands up on your arms, when you feel that there's something nearby that's freezing cold, that's letting you know it's there, how do you feel about that? I know ghost hunters. I have a lot of friends that do this thing. I had acquaintances, I've had friends, I've had family that's had experiences. So I wanted to gather them together and I want to try to see if I could tap into their minds and their feelings in this. So I'm asking you to take a journey with me, a dark journey, into this question of what happens when you die, what happens when you don't die, what happens if you're still attached to a building, a place, a thing. I want to hear about it. So join me on this expedition into the unknown where we can tap into these psyches, hear their stories. Who are you? I would like to hear this. I have been scratched. I have been bruised. I've had my hair pulled. I've been to diverse places like Waverly Hills. I've been to War Eagle Mill. I've been to Fort Chaffee Military Base. I've been to other places where all these big groups have been. My story, myself, was a love of urban exploring. Also, it evolved into the desire to want to help someone with this problem. Did you hear something in your living room at night? Do you have something whispering in your ear? Do you have something you feel is following you, stalking you? I'm here to help you. So that's my motivation. I'll admit, myself, right off the bat, there is, there is an adrenaline rush that you get. It's not like a drug, but it's something maybe beyond that. Because it gives you a thrill. So, therefore, I want to find out why it motivates them. I want to give these people a voice, and I'm here to do this today, starting today. I'm going to be showing you clips of interviews with people that will tell you the story and tell you what they have experienced, what they feel. Then I'm going to back it up to something that these shows can't do. That's hard-hitting evidence of actual spirit voices, pictures of unexplained phenomenon. So our first segment will be with a gentleman named Richard Russell. And this video was taken about a year ago at a location called Redland, Oklahoma, which a lot of people don't realize has an enormous history back, that back way back thousands of years ago there was a massive Indian war fought in this location. There's stories of missing Spanish doubloons kidnapped and murdered Civil War soldiers. I'm going to let him tell the story. I'm going to merely introduce the man. So I thank you.
This documentary will be called Dark Journeys. This will be the first segment. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. I'm Richard Lee Russell. I'm here at Redland Cemetery in Redland, Oklahoma. I was born and raised here. I'm 72 years old and I spent my entire life here. Well, I was born within a mile of here and, and uh, still live within a mile, mile and a half of here. And I was asked to come here and give the, the, uh, the events that's happened in this cemetery right here and uh, the sites and things that have happened right here regarding uh, what we're talking about, subject matter. Uh, this cemetery is got a lot of my family. There's been a lot of old graves uh, back to the days of the, uh, when the Cherokees come over from uh, the uh, being run, run out of Georgia and uh, and uh, Tennessee and all that right here. And a lot of them settled on this river right here. And a lot of uh, uh, a lot of those people are here in this area right here. Then their entire spirits and all. But back to the cemetery right here, we, we're concerned. Uh, a lot of people won't come back to this cemetery on account of the fact of things that's happened and things they've seen and heard. Uh, for example, we had uh, one fellow that killed, raped and killed two ladies out here years ago. And uh, they, they hung him out here, the big oak tree right there. And uh, they, the ladies, of course, are buried here. And they went ahead and buried him. And there's times you'll hear uh, of a night, you'll hear uh, a voice of saying, help, help, help. And then uh, there's been sightings of, of different lights that would, that would uh, light up as far as just kind of a flash right there. And uh, it's been picked up as far as different voices uh, talking about, uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? In other words, we're down here of a night, and this is a quiet area. It's, it's a rural area. Uh, it's nothing, nothing to see. Uh, like I said, there have been several mysterious uh, deaths through the years. Uh, they found the bodies, they, they buried them here. A lot of the graves go back to the early 1800s right there, almost 200 years old. Okay. And you, you'll, you'll see and hear tell different times of different sightings, different voices, different things that's unexplainable. And I can't explain it overall, but it's factual right there. And back uh, years and years ago, there were different hangings and murders that were done in this area right there because it used to be a town. Reminder of their family and then reminder of what they hear and the fear of what they, they it, it's taking place here. Uh, it's 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 watched somewhat by the police and kept an eye on and they still maintain the cemetery is but it is something that that come across the trail of tears came up through here all the Cherokees Choctaws and that group some of them settled here in this area and, and died off right here. You find uh, arrowheads, to arrows, to all kinds of different things here. But still back to what we're talking about is is the fact of of the sightings and voices that first come out on different nights and sit here and walk amongst the, the graves that overlooks the Arkansas River. And you will find uh, that you, you at different, different nights, different things that you'll hear different movement, even leaves blowing, there's no wind blowing. I mean, you hear people walking, you hear some walking steps, the, the leaves are crunching right here from, from the steps and there's no wind blowing, no explanation for it, it's unexplainable. And all I'm trying to be is just be factual with what I know and what I've heard. And this has been, like I say, an area years ago that was tough and bad and a lot of people were killed mysteriously right there. And this is, uh, everyone seems to think it's a lot of them feel that they were murdered or asking for help or and the other thing, what are you doing here? I mean, for as, and, and the, 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 the spotting of the, of a flash of light, there's no, there's no storm around, no reason for the lighting right there. There's no uh, no city around here for lights to come from a town. Uh, it's something that you just have to see. It's a, it can be a tourist attraction. It's something that uh, is, is known, uh, well, all around the country, been heard of Redland, Oklahoma, somewhere right there. But uh, it's, it's basically uh, now pretty well just a ghost town. Uh, one time had stores and all this right here, but it's, it's gone now. The cemetery's here, it's being maintained, and there's still activity. The barrels are going on, but still there's 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 different things that's unexplainable right there. But once you come in the night, and you sit on a quiet, calm night, walk out amongst the graves right there, and you very well can hear, you'll hear the leaves crunching where someone's walking, and there's no one within miles. 
you'll hear the voices. You hear voices, and you'll understand some of the voices say, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" You hear the voices saying, "Help me! Help me! Help me!" And these different things is unexplainable by all means, but I'm here to state that, that, that it does happen right here. There's some recordings that some different people have right there that can that can prove what I'm saying right here, and so uh, that kind of summarizes the 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 basic principles of uh, this is about this, this ghost area in Ghost Town. That's Redland, Oklahoma, west of Fort Smith, Arkansas, about 10 miles southwest of, of, of Fort Smith, Arkansas. And it is something to see, something to hear. And they're talking about uh, uh, filming and making a movie of it uh, later on. And if it is, we should go to go go see it because it's got quite a history to it right there overall. And uh, pretty well, what I'm telling you can be verified by different people. Uh, I just uh, winding down my, my what I know about this through the years and being as straight as I know how that's pretty well what uh, there's more more tales and more stories than that right there and, and more things that I'm aware of myself uh, but then there's a lot that I that that's that that people uh, they scratch their head and say what what's going on what's happened and uh, it, it, like I say it's unexplainable but until you see for yourself or you hear this right here and then it makes a believer here, just like it has me and other people that is in the community right there, you know. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you. And uh, if I can ever be any help, why uh, just get in touch right there. But uh, it is something to, to see and, and hear, and it's something for the record books. Good day. Hello. My name is Sherry, and I've had many paranormal experiences happen to me since the time I was nine years old. Um, anything from uh, somebody knocking at my front door but nobody being there to uh, a door handle moving, trying to get a door opened and there's nobody in there to um, I've seen a closet door open by itself and I've been woken up in the middle of the night to sounds and come to find out my dresser drawers had opened on their own um, all of them not just one um, I've heard my name being called in my ear I've heard someone say help I have heard somebody screaming in my ear um, I have felt something get up out of bed with me I have felt somebody sit down at the foot of the bed with me um, a few of my animals have passed away I feel like they visit me a lot and I can feel them uh, walk in the bed um, to the end of the bed and lay down. I have been um, scratched on the back like a little animal is trying to get your attention. And I turn around and there's nothing there. And um, I have seen shadow figures. I have seen smoke, like gray smoke, roll across the floor. I have had something touch me three times on my chin and woke me up. I have had somebody brush their hand across my cheek and woke me up. I have felt something touch my hand so cold, like ice cold, that it was almost wet feeling. But it woke me up and nothing's there. So that's just a few things that I've experienced. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Toast Maxwell. I'm a part of Spook Earth Paranormal. Uh, back in May 2024, we got to go investigate a house in Spyro that the homeowner reported heavy activity in. He collects old artifacts, like Indian artifacts and war artifacts, and that has contributed to some of the hauntings in his house. We got some pretty good EVPs, and we got to spend some time alone in one of the bedrooms where I got some pretty good responses to my questions, but I will let the recordings do the talking. I'm Grant Elliott with Spook Earth Paranormal. I'm out here at Center Point Cemetery near Redland. I'm here with a gentleman named Sherman. He's got a lot of history of this area. Um, Sherman, can you give me a little uh, history as far as the cemetery? I know you've got some family here, um, a lot of 
with all your family in Canada and compare you. Um, do you have any information as far as what's going on there or any history or background that would uh, cause that kind of situation? It got spooky. I mean, it's, but I know, you know, I don't know if it's, you know, paranoia stuff or that, mm-hmm. this and that. And I, I really don't know about, you know, about ghosts. But I had a, a guy down a, about a mile down from me doing a transmission for me. He was trying to get me up, you know, about him and his son the uh, night before seen a ghost. And he said he got by it running. As soon as he even got by it, he seen a big ghost. Oh, and okay. uh, this thing would scare off. told me that I thought about what happened to me the thing happened to me that's come to visit my parents mm-hmm. and so uh, all in all uh, you never know you know I, that's true. I, I, I kind of believe in, in stuff like that okay you know, I sure do and, uh, uh, I'm kind of lyrics now but you know I, I will come out by myself in here but ooh, I'm, I'm kind of trying to get that uneasy yes sir going. yeah I trying to get I try to get that uneasy feeling you know oh, yeah. Do you have any other family um, that's mentioned anything or known, uh, noticed anything odd? No, sir. Uh, I've got sisters. She comes out here and visits my parents, too. We just okay. hang out and, and, and visit. And I've got cousins and who comes out. And, uh, you know, they come out and visit and bring me to the uh, cemetery, you know. We've got family and cousins and all. You know, they come out and visit the cemetery and okay. keep it nice. But uh, I didn't hear them say anything about that. There's, so, there's something here is what you feel. Yeah. Right? There's yeah. something trying to talk to you or make you uneasy uh, is what the feeling that you get here. Oh, yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, I got very, very uneasy about that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I uh, got a couple other questions. Um, was there anything uh, tragic that would that has taken place or somebody that had something tragic that they had lost or buried? Or spiritual. That's ooh, you take me way back. Uh, I, it's been it's been a lot of there's quite a few I've carried and uh, you know uh, you know family wise mm-hmm. you know I, I couldn't get the full details about it you know it's yep. back in back in the early you know thirties and forties uh, and you know twenties you know it's been you know it's history. Lots of history. Of history. Yes, sir. It's a lot of history. Well, there, there's really uh, no right. telling as far as, I mean, like we were speaking earlier about the 1940s, the flood. Yes, sir. Um, they had a flood in the 40s, man, and uh, it wiped, you know, pretty near red land out, you know, family and, 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 and different cultures had to move here and, and go other places because the flood wiped them out. They had a old cotton gin here one time. Bells, I know my grandpa said bells, but uh, cotton out of here, old 
being posted to those um, guys years and years back in the day. Like, you know, just as a little review page. You know, just to get this and this and this. It's a lot of history here. Yes, sir. It definitely yeah. feels like a lot of history here. And it almost feels like there's some things unanswered. Uh, I guess I'm kind of starting to get that feeling that you, you're getting that kind of getting it done and you like somebody's watching it. Mm. Um, I, yeah. I felt that as soon, as soon as I walked in here. Um, Never know, like I said, it's. I mean, it's, and it's it's been a crooked, it's been a crooked uh, territory too. It's been a, a lot of shit that's been going on. Yeah, I mean, we we also got uh, our allotment there that is the Indian. Yes, sir. Uh, there's yeah, a lot of Native yeah. Americans. Yes, sir. A uh, lot in there. So there. There's really no telling as far as what we're gonna face here as far as uh, paranormal. As, but as far as your knowledge, you don't know of anything that would be um, a catastrophic loss or anything like that that would cause any type of activity to be here. Because usually, usually activity like that is as a result of of a sudden death of um, an individual. You know, you know what I'm talking about, like a tragic death, a homicide, or anything like that. There's nothing of your knowledge. Well, that no, would cause this kind of activity. No homicide I can think of, that I, you know, or uh, anything like that. Uh, stuff like that does it. Uh, but at one time, it was all Indian burial ground. You know, that, you know, like with my grandpa would say, you know, that uh, you know, he, he rode his guys and stuff. You know, when he was just a kid, he'd get them and they'd ride horses and go to the next you know, neighboring part with the mules and stuff like that. And they're very, very close. Guns on the hip, you know. Oh guns wow! During the day, and uh, you know, like Arkansas, right across the border here, you got you know the Fox Hunt right there, right behind us. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, this this is all combined. Had some gunslingers there running you go. around. There um, you go. And you know, you take Oklahoma, what they did come to state, what, what, 1980, what? Yeah. Oh, I'd, I'd be lying to you. It'd be, it is up there. I, I, I need to freshen up on the history. I don't, too. I don't know, but I know it was in, you know, early 1900s, you know, but yeah. I can't, I don't want to tell you that, but that's it. It's just very interesting. It's a lot of history in there. Lots of history. Lots of history. Sure have. Well, mm-hmm. Mr. Sherman, I appreciate your time and appreciate your stories. Yes, sir. And, uh, thank you. Yes, sir. And uh, we'll just continue on with this investigation and see if we can find the unseen. Yes, sir. Outstanding. Hi, Zach. I'm Francis Zerwas. I live alone up here on Buck Mountain Road for 26 years. There's a lot of paranormal activity, a lot of paranormal attacks that I've experienced. And uh, I've had seen apparitions. I've seen this one man. He was full-bodied. And he was like a wrestler, muscler, muscle guy. And uh, I seen two women. I seen a little puppy that I, I took in one night. And the, the, whatever was in here, didn't want the puppy in here. And he picked the puppy up or whatever it did and slammed it on the floor. And then I had to let the puppy out because it would have killed the puppy. But then my boyfriend was picked up off the floor and thrown into the wall. And I've seen uh, blue rays come in my bedroom. I've seen... Uh, just things going off the wall, the globes of my light go off the wall. Uh, I have so much here, it's hard to explain everything, but it's real and it's, it's compacted in my home. It's like it's traveling through my home. And I'm a magnet to it and I, I just sense that I am. But anyway, I hope that you can come up here because I need you to help me get rid of this in my home and on me because I think I'm attached, something's attached to me. Because everywhere I live, I'm always having something on me. And I just need somebody to help me because nobody listens to me. Nobody wants to believe me. And I trust you. And I, I, you're the only one I would trust to do this. And I, I know you like to help people. And you're a good man. So if you can just take me for serious, this is real. And it's affecting my health. It's affecting everything. You know, my livelihood, everything up here. Whatever it is, it, it doesn't want me to do anything it wants to take me down under or something it just doesn't it's attacking me but I need your help I need somebody here to help me get rid of this and to help me to have more peace in my in my life and I hope to goodness that 
he will take me serious because this is real. Okay. Okay. Hi, good evening. It's June 1st, 2019. My name is Michael Todd. And I'm Sue Windham. Together we are Spook Earth Paranormal Investigations. We were selected from 28 teams to participate in this new TV program. The new television endeavor that we're participating in is called Truth and Legends in Your Hometown. The premise of this show is basically simple. We were given a list of certain locations in your respective state, in this case the state of Oklahoma, to go, drive to, and investigate. In our case, we picked the Michael Fuller Gas and Automobile Museum in Enola, Oklahoma. I will provide you with a brief bit of history. Mr. Fuller was in the Army in the early 1970s. He uh, was out in 1973 and began collecting automobiles and then memorabilia from the 1940s and up. And his, his location sits in what used to be the gymnasium of the WPA built school, which is right across the street, 1930s era. Some of his items that he has uh, date back to the military days when his father was in the Navy and he was in the military in the Army. We did possibly get some items in there that could have some activity surrounding them. So we did some extensive investigation and we feel we might have actually might have cost something. But for the show for the show requirements, when it happens, we'll let you know. There's a stamp that we will show you is the truth or is it legend. Thank you. Hey, what was that? My name is Jerry Hampton. I live in Sparrow, Oklahoma. I'm only two miles from Sparrow Mounds, where it's an ancient Indian burial ground. I, I've, uh, my, I've uh, had a ghost happenings all, all the all the years there, but nothing have I ever been attacked. This year, about March, I had a, a grandfather clock was six feet tall. It, it was, a, in a, I heard a crash one night, it was thrown out in the middle of the floor, busted all to pieces. It's probably 80, 100 years old. Next thing, I have a room I was sleeping in last summer, been sleeping in it for five years. I woke up, it was solid cold, I could see my breath from the, uh, in, in it. And I went out to open the door, I thought the air conditioner was on. It was 100 degrees outside that door. This happened two or three times. I moved out of that room into another bedroom. And I'm, I'm sleeping there one night and I hear a crash, a door slam. And I opened up, investigate the, the noise. And when I did, something pushed me through the, into the doorway of the, in the hall. And that upset me. Well, the next thing happened this year, not long ago, I had my door locked. And something attacked me in my bedroom, and it busted two ribs. And then after that, here about 10 days ago, I was sleeping, and something cut my arm all to pieces. Really deep cuts in it, and it's not a, the size of a human plant. I don't know what it is. But, Zach, I am frightened, and I am scared. I don't know what it is, but I am very frightened. If you can help, I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. I am Cindy Looney, and I am a part-time member of Spook Earth Paranormal. We are here at a home in Spira, Oklahoma, and we're going to do a walkthrough because it is reported there is a lot of activity here. So we're going to walk through and see what we can feel, what we can see, and what we can hear. Anybody in here with us? I'm going to turn the light out for a minute. Alec and I were in here earlier and there was somebody or something that kept moving back and forth from that corner over that way. 
probably a child. And it's colder in here than it was earlier. Okay. So I feel, I mean, it's not the fan because it was on earlier. Anybody in here? Can you knock on something if you're here? It's just a real heavy feeling in this area every time I come in here. Anybody in here? Can you tap on the wall like that? Let us know that you're here. Can you feel that heaviness? I'm going to open this door. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, I feel heavy here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn the light out. I'm going to get it on. Leave it on? Yeah. Okay. Is anybody in here with us? Can you tap on something to let us know you're here? a pretty place here. Mm. I can feel somebody. I do too. Yeah. I, I feel it in my head. They give me a heaviness. I feel like something trapping the side of my temples. Me too. Same, same strange thing. Strange feeling. Very strange feeling. Mm -hmm. If you're here, I sure would like for you to knock on something and let us know that you're here. We know you are. We can feel you. Feel that. The curtains are moving. Do you see them moving? They're just there so slightly, but they kind of go in and out like that. Can you make them move again? Are you the one that caused them to move last time I was here? Can you move those curtains for me? I can see it swinging. Can you? And it, it must be noted there is no air on in this room. No fan or furnace flowing. And the windows are new and sealed. Oh. 
closet here. Oh, yeah, it's stuck in here. Can you knock on the wall? Let us know that you're here. Or blink the light. You were blinking the light in the living room. Can you blink this one? Turn it off. Or make it flicker. I think they're getting shy. Looks that way. Okay. Can we have that up on it? Yeah. Thank you very much. Good evening. It's Saturday, January the 8th. I'm in Spiral, Oklahoma at the home of one of my good ghost investigators. And we're in a very haunted location. And I'm filming this for possible use in a documentary called Dark Journeys. I'm going to pan around here. I have a gentleman with me that has something he'd like to say. My name's Jerry Hampton, and I've been dealing with the paranormal my whole life. Uh, it was just something happened. I was born that way. I had abilities that other people don't seem to have or don't know how to use. But I didn't realize that it's a, and when you're young and things happen and you don't understand what's going on, it's a very scary thing for a young kid. I have predicted several people with death, car crashes, a couple of plane crashes in the past, and some and many other things that's happened and usually not good, but I predicted them way before they happened. I knew, I get that knowing joy, knowing something is gonna happen, and it happens, and I finally got used to it. But I remember the first person I really have a, a big remembrance about who passed away. I, uh, my, I used to sell things at the shoe factory across the street from my house in Chaffee, Missouri. Well, the shoe factory's gone now, but, it's, but it was one time a pretty big operation in Chaffee. It was all built by volunteer labor. And many, many people would quit at noon when a bell rung and went out there and worked on it back in the 40s so they would have a job. Well, they worked there up in the 60s, and I was just a kid. I'd go there and sell things. When they come out the door, I'd have a handful of something to sell for school or for the church. Or sometimes I'd just buy stuff like grit and sell grit there, and I would sell them all. But I had this one man. A very nice guy, I knew him for a couple of years, and he always gave me a tip, and he bought it. That on one, the last occasion I seen him, he bought the last piece of a bass picture I had of Jesus, and he gave me a dollar. It was a fifty cent picture. He said, "Keep the change." Then I shook his hand, and I and that was the last thing I had. I was headed home. I kept saying to myself, "He's gonna die." He is going to die. No, Jerry, you're stupid. He ain't going to die. He's okay. It's, your brain screwed up. What's wrong with you? I got home, forgot about it. Well, I used, I had a neighbor that right next to me, always, it was a night watchman there, and security. And on the weekends, I'd go over and spend time with him. And we would talk and have a good time and tell stories and one thing or another. And he this he, that was on a Friday evening when they were getting off of work, and Sunday I went over there and I was made him as he made his well we got talking. He said, "You know Joe, so and so passed away." And I said, "No, he killed himself, Jerry. He was embezzling money from the from a place, and he got caught. I was getting caught, and he got scared and killed himself." And I, oh my. God, and I remember all the things I said and thought about at that point in time. Well, 
uh, he, uh, the next time that happened, that really I remember was my grandfather. My grandfather was going to take my car down and have it worked on. I was 16 and driving, and he took, he was, and I caught the school bus at the house. But before I left that day, for some reason, I remember reaching over, hugging my grandpa. He was a big man, and I was a small guy, but he's a big man. And I actually kissed him on the cheek. I never will forget that. Grandpa, I love you. Last thing, you know, the last thing he said is, I love you, Jerry. And I'm very proud of you. I said, thank you, Grandpa. And, but that, uh, back then, a kid didn't kiss his dad. It just was one of them things you just didn't do. But for some reason, I had to hug him and kiss him and love him. And I did. About 2.30 or 3 o'clock that afternoon, our neighbor came over to the school. I said, Jerry, uh, you're going to have to go home. Your Grandpa has been in a car wreck. At Rockview, and what happened? The car accelerator stuck, and him—he was eighty-something years old, and the car accelerator stuck, and he couldn't stop it. it could, he added out a gear, or whatever. He got scared, went over a rear truck, and hit another car head-on. Thankfully, no one on the other car was hurt bad, but he was thrown out of the car and killed. He didn't die yesterday. I went to the hospital, and I was with him, but. I have never forgot that, but there's been other cases through my lifetime that I have seen things I hit. Uh, I've seen a couple plane crashes, and then I wrote, I, at 13 or 14 I started keeping a small diary of things I've seen and knew, and it started, and when they, when they happened, I'd check them off. One day I realized I checked almost everything in that little book off. And I was scared. I mean, I had run in with ghosts. I met, seen ghosts before. I seen things when I was little, and I couldn't explain. And I didn't understand, but I was scared a few times. But it, it, it wasn't really frightening. It's just something I felt. Uh, not bad, but I felt about it. Uh, we do have a parallel world. We have ghosts as well. And right here in this room is a parallel world with us. I took pictures of that parallel world, and I picked pictures of what's in the other side. And it, to us, it's pretty scary, but it, maybe not to them, but it's pretty scary to us. And you have to have the ability to do that. Not all people can take a picture, uh, but with the new equipment today we have, you can do things and pick up things and voices that you could not never do before. But now when I, uh, my, uh, but when I got 16, I actually, around 16, I read a book by a man named Harlow Sherman. He was an older man at that point in time. And I read his book, and I was just, I was, he explained everything that happened to me, and things I knew, things that I just couldn't understand, but I explained them very good. I wrote him a letter, and we started writing back and forth, and I sent him a copy of my little little book I had with all the stuff I'd seen and dated and happened. And we wrote back and forth all summer. And he last thing he said, Jerry, you got a great ability. You can use it for good or you can use it for bad. But remember, it, it's an ability, and it, God has blessed you and to use it well. And I think uh, maybe I've done that. Uh, it saved my life many, many times. And, and I, I, I just naturally, one time I, me and my buddy, I was going to, I, I was going to another town, Rockview, from Rockview to Scott City. There's a long curve in, in, in the summertime. It's a lot of trees on both sides. And the trail, the, tree, the curve goes way out. Well, you can't see another car light coming. It's about eight or nine o'clock at night, and me and Bill were running together. And I was doing 80 mile an hour. I just bought a new car, and I was trying it out. And all of a sudden, I heard something say, Jerry, take your foot off the cell radio. 
I looked over at Bill and I said, Bill, did you hear that? He said, yeah, I heard that. Somebody in the back seat? No. Better take your foot off. So I took it off. And we just glided. Now we were sort of in shock. We came around that corner, which you could not see it at night because of all the trees, the lights, and right in the middle of the road was a double car crash head on. We'd have hit it. We'd both been killed. At 80 miles an hour, there wouldn't have been nothing left of us. And there wasn't nothing left of them in that car either because they had had a car head on collision. But uh, there's so many things in my life that happened that I. Uh, you know, and as far as ghosts concerned, they're there. I've talked to them. I use divining rods. When I use them rods, they spin. And I begin to see things around me that other people can't not. I don't see them. I sense them. I really sense them. And I can almost, I can see a person. I can see what they look like. And it's just unbelievable. But I've also seen them without the divining rods. Uh, my sister was moving out of a house on the other side of Jackson, out in the country. And when she was loading the stuff up, I remembered I kept seeing a young girl, about 24, brown hair, dressed in a woolen tight shirt, blue jeans, looking. It was a ghost. She was watching. And wonder as we loaded the stuff up, and uh, that girl, I had I seen her just as well as I see Mike right here, and I told my sister, uh, "You've got a ghost here." Yeah, we had we thought we had something because things things happen here. Well, she moved to another house, and I don't think the girl went with her, but she was she I think but she stayed there. But she was looking around the corner two or three times as they loaded the truck, and I never will forget that. Uh, another time, which is probably the most memorable time of a ghost, me and my wife went to a uh, to a singing at Burfordsville, Missouri, at the old mill, the Burfordsville mill. It was in the summertime, hot, hundred degrees, hundred and five degrees out. Never will forget it. I'm sitting there and I'm on the edge and there's my wife is here and there's just rows of people. And all of a sudden I my arm got solid cold. It frosted up. It frosted up and there was ice. My arm was almost turning blue from cold. And I reached over to touch my wife and she said, Oh, you got somebody with you? I said, yeah. And it was a girl, about 14 years old. She had brown hair, long brown hair. She's dressed in period dress. And we communicated mind to mind for a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes. And I asked her, I said, where are you buried at? And she says, well, if you go down the creek about a half mile, there's some graves down there, and mine is a third grade over. Okay, and we had a little chat, and then finally she left. And a man come by me, looked at my arm, and could tell, look, he said, man, you're cold. The old man said, you're cold. I said, yeah, I've got cold chills once in a while. I wouldn't want to tell everybody I'd just been talking to a ghost. But it did. Well, that was in June. Well, we went back down there for a party, uh, my birthday party in November. And it was a warm, nice day. It had been cold weather, and a lot of the grass and stuff had been dyed out already. So, me and my wife walked down. I said, let's go down there to that there and look for that graveyard. Okay, we'll go. Sure enough, I got down there about a quarter of a mile. And there was the graveyard. And there was the graves, and her third grave over. And I tried to talk to her, get her in, but I couldn't get nothing from her or out of her. But it was there, just like she told me it was there. That's a memorable occasion for me, because uh, I mean, my arm was so cold, it was blue. Unbelievable. Uh, and then when I used my dividing rods, 
sometimes I've only had been hurt twice. Uh, back in the 80, 1982, someplace in there, I went to, I went out to uh, Gettysburg and went to the through the battlefield out there. As the devil's did, and the what they were spinning. When they start spinning, I get things to see things around me. And they were really spinning good. All of a sudden, I'm in front of this rock, in front of the devil's den, this rock's all over the place, down there on the ground. It's a, it's a rocky place. It's granite, or I think it's granite. Limestone or granite, but anyway, something hit me in the back of the back, hard. I, almost like I'd been shot, or hit with the butt of a gun is what I felt like. And I hit the ground, I hit the rock, and almost hit that that big rock in front of me, about six inches from it. And my old wife got me up, she got to look to, oh my God, what happened? I was scratched up, cut up, and she looked, I said, my back. And she opened up my shirt, and about that big was a big black mark on my back. She said, I need to take you to the hospital. And I said, no. What am I going to do, honey? I'm going to tell the doctor when I get there that I was out there on the battlefield and somebody either shot me or hit me in the back with a butt of a gun. And she thought about it a while. She said, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> he ain't going to see it. But anyway, uh, that was another experience. But I've had several others, many others. But that's a rememberable point. But I didn't, that when I... And then the next time, me and Mike was working in Ida, Oklahoma, and I and we hadn't been there long, and the lights were out, and, and the light and my and they begin to spin, and they, man, they were spinning very, very heavy. All of a sudden, something hit me on my right arm. I mean, it knocked my rods out of my hand and knocked me to my knee. And when you turn the light on and look, my whole arm looked like a a print been burnt into it and I still got a scar here somewhere where that round spot is that's still part of it my whole arm was like that but it was looked like a handprint hit me and mashed me or something and it took it months to heal it should have healed in a couple of days or a week but it didn't it took it months to heal and then I've also had uh, paranormal experiences uh, well, I, I, uh, I had a woman work with me, and I never, and I never thought about it. But when I was five, four or five years old, my grandfather had a back room in his house. I go down and visit him, and there was a trunk saw was in there. But I go in there and play once in a while, and all of a sudden, one day, these little rats about this tall came bouncing around and I just laugh at them and I find them funny and they tumble and they do different things. And I was really, I, I just found me some buddies to play with. And I did that two or three times. I go in there and start cackling. Finally, my grandpa pulled me out of the room and said, now you just, you just don't go in there no more. And next thing I know, I come back to the house. He put a padlock on the door. I never did get in there for a long time again. and didn't see him. But I forgot all about this memory. I forgot about the rats or whatever with the hands and bouncing around. And a, a woman I worked with, she says, it was, it was on a Halloween weekend coming up. And we was listening to ghost stories. They're talking about having ghost stories. She said, you know, I've never seen anything paranormal. But you know, when I was about 12, my brother was about 13, we had a picnic table in the backyard. And we had, uh, under a nice tree, we'd go out there and eat, drink sodas, and just enjoy the afternoon when it cooled off. And all of a sudden, these little rats come out all summer. They come out, and about a foot tall, foot and a half, and they bounce around the tree, do flips and things, and we just laugh our, our, ourselves to death. And Bonnie, my brother, said, you know, we look out, this happened several times during the summer. But you know, we looked out there, and I, my brother said, here come them dammits. <laughs> what do you call them, dammits? And, and I didn't realize, I remember that. 
But you, you mentioned it, and it brought the memory back when I was little. Uh, so that's that's another thing. Uh, also, I, back in the 70s and the 60s in southeast Missouri, where I grew up, around Cape Girardeau and Chappie, in Sykeston, Missouri, they had a numerous number of sightings of UFOs. And I could tell you some stories that were told me by my friends. It's a, just blow of your mind. But uh, one night, when my, in June, my son was born. In, and it was early June. And uh, I remember uh, me and my buddy, I lived in Scott City. Me and my buddy went over to see my wife in the hospital. And we spent the day, half the day with her. And that night, I was coming home. It was about 7.30, 8 o'clock. They'd run me out of the hospital. But I was so excited talking about my son, I never will forget it. I was so excited about him. And all of a sudden, we come to a railroad track. Now, the day they have an overpass, but back then, they had a railroad track that ran across from Frisco. And they were, and the cotton belt also used it. And the, it went across. And here's this really long train. Well, we're sitting there in the train going by. And my buddy says, Jerry, look over there. Look over there, Jerry. What is that helicopter doing over that tree? Well, 100, about 100 yards or 80 yards from the road is a big tree, and it's there today. About 30 feet or so above that tree, maybe 40, not much. I remember seeing his lights out there. Uh, man, I don't know. I kept on talking. Pretty soon after a while, I'm so excited about my son and the train goes by, I'm still talking. And uh, I couldn't shut up. I was <laughs> so excited. But the thing is, he looks over at me and says, seriously, Jerry. He didn't say seriously, he said, Jerry, he made, my, he made the point. What in is that helicopter? Why come we can't hear it? The train's gone. So I remember, I got out uh, of the car. I said, oh. I just, I go see. I walked up to it and I didn't realize it. It wasn't making a sound. And all of a sudden, now it's a plowed field, it's in June, and they're going to plant something. It's a plowed field now. And they were it. And I walk up to it, and all of a sudden, my whole body, every hair on my body was as a magnetic field went around me. And my hair went straight up. And I. God, first, I've been through a lot of hell, and, and I had seen a lot of stuff, but that scared me the worst because I wasn't expecting it, I guess, but it scared me bad. Anyway, I, I watched it, and then I started running back, and I fell down, got up, fell down twice, two or three times, maybe, across that part, trying to get back. About that time, I'm laying down on my back, and it goes up, like that, and it, out of sight. Well, that next day, they were in the newspapers, the KFBS TV and the radio, about all the sightings of a champion around the small area of about 12 miles to 15, 20 around Chappie and Scott City and out in Cape. And there were pictures, they had 13 pictures at one time of UFOs in the sky. Never will forget it. And I was so shook up that I, Dr. Rettridge at that time had a group and he'd done a lot of things, to do, uh, a lot of uh, uh, UFO work, and he was one of the top professors at the University of Missouri, Southeast Missouri. And uh, I went and talked to him. He said, well, and he, we, he calmed me down. And he said, yes, we, you, and you ain't the only one. And he says, oh, if you want to, you can come join my team. It's old college kids, but you don't have to be in school. I said, well, I'm not, but I'll be graduated for about six months. I spent time with his group. And I was very uh, interested in what went on. But I worked away from home a lot. So I, back then I worked on the river and I'd be gone for weeks and time. And I didn't get to see a lot of stuff, but what I did, I got educated with UFOs. And, uh, but there are so many things that happen and I have such ability. Sometimes it don't, I go for weeks and nothing happens. All of a sudden I just know things are gonna happen and how they're going to happen, they do. Uh, 
it's a, it's amazing. But it's when you're growing up and you see these things and you see these ghosts and you see these things happening to you, and it's scary for a kid if they don't know. I really didn't find peace till I got to communicating with Mr. Sherman, and I, after I read his book and I read another book he wrote, I think. But anyway, it was an amazing experience to have his help. And uh, but the, there's we have so many things in this world that it just don't make sense. Uh, we, I believe, and we, de I know we have a parallel world, a parallel world, and sometimes we get caught up in them. I have never personally uh, got caught up in a parallel world, but one time I did have something happen, a time change on me. And this is an important story because uh, I just bought a new sports car, I hadn't drove it 40 miles and didn't really understand how everything worked on it. And I was, my, the man I worked for was really sick and I'd be at, I'd work all day at the plant. I ran a plant for him. And then I'd come and relieve his daughter. She was taking care of him. And I'd stay till about, oh, about 11 o'clock, 10.30, 11 o'clock, and then I, I'd go home. Well, uh, one night, I was on a, Friday night, I got off work and I went down there like I've been doing for the past five or six weeks. Spent time, let his daughter get away and rest, and while well, I had to spend time with him, and we had a good time together always. And uh, he said, hey, Jerry, why don't you stay tonight? And I said, No, Pop, I can't do that. I got two dogs waiting home to get fed, and and they can get the cells out when they want to come in, but they need to get fed. So I said, I'm going to have to go home. Well, I got outside his house. Now, you got to realize that I lived about 25 minutes to the plant. And his house was about 10 to 15 miles on the other side of the plant. And I uh, got into this fog. It was a shutout fog. I mean, you couldn't see nothing. And I just bought that new sports car. And I'm going easing in second gear. I don't think I got out of got out of third gear the whole trip, but I just easing be I couldn't see nothing. And then down about fifteen miles from his house to the plant we had turn off to go to Chaffee. There's a whole bunch of construction work going on down there. And I like to run over construction stuff set down. And it kept going. It kept going. I figured it took about two hours or hour and a half to get there. Well, I got there, I left at 11 o'clock. I got there, I looked at the clock, and it was 10 after 11. I went through 35 miles of fog in 10 to 15 minutes. And I thought, this can't be right. So I called his daughter up and I said, what time did I leave there? You left like you always do about 11 o'clock. And he said, where you at? I said, I'm at home. We didn't have, I didn't have a cell phone back then, so I had a telephone at my house. And uh, she says, you can't. You just left here. I said, no, I'm home. Oh, Jerry, quit joking. She wouldn't believe it. But I went 10 to 15 minutes, I went all the miles, and I'm in second and third gear in the sports car. So that is a missing time and I do not understand if that's a parallel time or in different rim or what, but that's something that did happen to me and i never forget that. But I've had a lot of things and I've done a lot of things and the supernatural comes natural to me now, but a few years ago when I was a kid it was scary. And uh, so, you know, and me and Mike's had some great adventures. I mean, we have had some great adventures. And we've, it's just fantastic. And I hope to have a lot more with him and maybe you get to see a little bit more of me. I'm nothing special, but God gave me a gift. And I, I do use it. And Jerry, I, I believe it. you. I believe every word you say, and I appreciate you beyond belief, man. Yep. Beautiful. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I appreciate you sharing the story.